Sorry, y'all, man. Facebook keep cutting off on me and stuff, so what can I say? What can I do? So now, uh, I'm only going to do this about 20 more minutes anyway. So, once again, I be at them good places and it, mess, and it, and it messed up. So, But let's see if we can keep going on. All right. I know my Bible has been like it's been through some stuff because it half. But let's keep going. It says, and as he set up on the Mount of Olives, um, and what shall be the sign of the end of the world? That's what I stopped at, right? So, or the end of the age. So, a right, shalom, shalom. Um, I'm just proving that uh, the Bible has been fulfilled, everything is over with. It's done. I'm using Matthew 24 to prove that. A lot of people might not hold that view, but I'm gonna walk. I'm walking through Matthew 24 to show everybody what Christ prophesied and what He taught. So now they asked him, "What will be the sign of the end of the age?" This is my third installment because uh, Facebook keep cutting me off. So now you, we have um, right there. I have Hebrews 9:26. So let's just walk through it. Once again, uh, Christ made a prophecy around 27 through 30 AD. So let's go to something around 60 AD. Uh, about 30 some odd years after Christ made that prediction. And let's see what we can find out. Hebrews 9:26. says uh, 20 let's go to 24 for Christ is not enter into the holy places made with hands which are the figures of the true but into heaven itself so the temple was just a figure of heaven and now to appear in the presence of God for us. Once again, the temple was a figure of heaven. So don't forget, I will, rec I will create new heavens and earth. We have the temple being called a figure of heaven. Not literal heaven, but a figure of heaven. Verse 25. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. Verse 26, for then must he have often, sorry, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, our age, had he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So, Christ's sacrifice happened during the time of the end. So, the end of the age, it just didn't last. It didn't take four days or five days. It took a correlation of 40 years. The same 40 years, the symbolic that it took them to get through the wilderness, that's the 40 years that it took for the age to come to an end but now let's see what it says um uh, he offered himself as a sacrifice right so that means he had to die correct so what's the correlation of him offering himself as a sacrifice for the end to come about well once again everything you can find that christ did even his prophecy is daniel 70 weeks so, let's go to Daniel 70 weeks. Daniel uh, 9 and 26. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. So, he wasn't cut off for himself. What does Hebrew 9, 26 say? Let's go back there again. See, we got to get in here and make these correlations right. So Hebrews 9.26, or around 9.26, it says, uh, sorry, that's 10. And I hate having to do this with one hand, but my, you know, the internet. But anyway, it says, 
had offered himself as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others to what? Atone for the sins of the people. For then must he have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the age or world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Look, as it is appointed unto man once to die, but this, but after this the judgment, so Christ was offered to bear the sins of many, and to them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So once, for first of all, uh, that's the second coming, and the people that were supposed to see this, his second coming was the ones that looked for him. Everybody else was going to get taken by that flood. Or that army. But anyway, he offered himself to bear the sins of many. Daniel 9, 26. Messiah should be cut off, but not for himself. So this Messiah being cut off wasn't for himself. According to Hebrews, which we all know, it was for the sins of others. Not for himself. And shall the people of the prince shall uh, sorry, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Okay. So we back at Matthew 24. We're trying to get there little by little if it quit cutting off. And I have 1 Corinthians 10, and I think that's 11, maybe. Or 30? Let's see here. Yep. 10 and 11. Now all these things happen unto them for end samples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages or world are come. So that's once again that Paul is saying during his time, the end of the age or the end of the world has come. That time of the end. Same thing with the author of Hebrews said. Same thing what they asked him. When will that time be? What will be the signs of that time? So Paul start noticing and recognizing those signs. The only way for Paul to say that the end of the ages has came or is or what he was living during that time, that means the signs had to occur for it. So Paul saw some of these signs for him to know that the end of the age or the end of the world has come the author of Hebrews saw some of these signs for him to know that the end of the age has came or he was living at that time of the end uh, let's go to John 12 48 that would be the last one John 12 48 John 12 let's see what 48 say Uh, let's get focus. Uh, it's like my old camera. He that rejected me and re receiving not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall, shall judge him in the last day. So uh, all of those things that you find in John 12 and all that, you can read it yourself. Those were supposed to come upon who? Who was he talking to? The Israelites. The Israelites. But now, let's keep reading. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man shall deceive you. I got 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3.
So y'all, let's put this down. Y'all still can hear my voice. It's easier when I do it with two hands. We're going to Second Thessy, two and three. I don't know why Second Thessalonians is always hired from me. Second Thessalonians two and three says. All right, let's start at one. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering unto him. So they were gathering unto Christ right there. That's the gathering that people are talking about. When is he going to come? He's supposed to gather the northern and the southern kingdom. He's going to gather the saints. He's going to blow the horn, all that stuff. Where is this gathering? This is the gathering right here. They was gathering under Christ. That's the true gathering under Christ. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. See, they try to jump the gun and say that that day of the Lord right there was uh, was in their midst. That's what he mean by at hand, close, in their midst. Because the temple wasn't even destroyed yet. So how could that day of the Lord be there without all of the signs? See, it was some signs that had to go through. And they jumped a majority of the signs and was saying, look, Paul them said it was already over with. No, Paul is saying, no, man, there's some stuff that got to happen. First of all, the, the apostasy got to happen. And then the man of sin got to be happen. Got to happen. And, and, and then the destruction of the temple got to happen. All that stuff got to happen before uh, the, the day of the Lord come. But if it was out in the open, they wouldn't know, right? Did they not? They, did they? Why would they think the day of the Lord was there if the sun stopped, did not stop shining and the moon did not stop shining? And if there wasn't a big earthquake and uh, people was coming out of the ground, floating up to the sky, why, why come they thought? Uh, the day of the Lord has came and they didn't see none of that. Why do they think that Christ had already returned if they didn't see none of those actions? Because those actions are not literal. Once you read it in the Bible, these are figurative language and, and, and hyperboles and metaphors. This is not a literal rapture. People coming up uh, tombstoning out of the ground and they body been put back together and they float to heaven and uh, and then the whole earth shake and rip apart. Then the sun starts shaking and the moon uh, turn to blood. All that stuff is figurative language. It's not literally supposed to happen. That's why they already thought that Christ had already came. Paul had to let them know, no, some more stuff got to happen before that new covenant come and that kingdom of heaven come. That, that, that kingdom of heaven, that spiritual kingdom of heaven that is going to put the most high on the earth just like he was with Adam. That haven't happened yet. But anyway, let's keep going on. So Paul said, let no man deceive you because the deception is real, was real. People still deceiving today, telling people that this is a future event. But now, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Many people will say, I am Christ. How you doing, Mr. Chucky? Yes, sir. I ain't going to be on here too much longer. I'm just hearing a few things. So let's go to Revelation 6 and 2, because... That's about the time of the end to it, right? Why not go to Revelation? We should be able to find some correlation between Matthew. If Matthew was about the time of the end, and Revelation is about the time of the end, and Isaiah's uh, 66, 65 is about the time of the end, and, and um, where else? Daniel is about the time of the end. 
Shouldn't all these have some things similar into it since they are about the same time period? You better believe it. So now, let's go to Revelation 6 and 2. The first thing Christ said, or well, many will come in my name, said, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Revelation 6 and 2. Let's start at 6 and 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. Okay, so these seals that the that Christ, because Christ is the Lamb, these seals that Christ is opening, what, what is the seal to? What, what's being sealed? The covenant. Covenants was taken in seals. Some of them was taken in uh, actual seven seals. So this will be Christ opening up that new covenant for mankind. So in order for that new covenant to come, he has to break those seals off of that covenant. That, 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 that ensign, that, that stamp, he had to break them off. So this is the seals being broken off of that covenant. Or of that um that 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 papyrus or whatever you want to call it that has that that uh covenant or the inheritance in it. This is Christ popping it. So now I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals and I heard as it were noise of thunder. One of the four be saying, come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow. So now, who we know in the scriptures, later on in Revelation, having a, right ho or having a white horse? Christ, right? Yep. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. He had a bow. And you can go to Deuteronomy 20, 32, 23 to see what uh, Moses was prophesying about those uh, those arrows. This is the bow without the arrow. So those arrows were being cast. But anyway, he had a bow and a white horse and he was conquering. Kind of reminds you of Christ, right? But we know that's not Christ yet because Christ come later on. Christ's second coming is later on. In fact, Christ comes around seal six. So this right here will be a Christ figure doing what Christ do, but not quite Christ. Matthew 24 and 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Well, we have a fake Christ there. We have a fake Christ in Revelation. Let's see, verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars, but all these things have not came to pass just yet. So now, why is it not the end yet? Why is it not the end yet? Because he tells you right here. Let's keep going. First you hear of wars and rumors of wars, and then what? For nation shall rise against nation. So first you hear about the rumors of wars. Then you actually have the wars. For nation shall rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. And pestilences. And earthquakes. And diverse places. You go to Revelation 6. You go to verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that set thereon to take peace from the earth, and, they th and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So now, I guess we can hit the famines and pestilences too, right? With my wells, right? Verse, so we have the power of uh, peace was taken from the earth. So this is that's the wars coming. The great sword also represents the wars. Verse 5, and when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld and lo, a, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny or a day wages, and three measures of barley for a day wage. And see, thou not hurt the oil and the wine. So that would be the famine. 
verse 7. And when, when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the f voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And look, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and with the beast of the earth. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There should be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So all of those things right there, you see it right there. But look, all these are the beginning of sorrows. So once you take a little uh, skedaddle, uh, you can go to um, let's see here. Deuteronomy 32, 24. Deuteronomy 32, 24 these were the things look um for i know that after my death ye will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which i have commanded you and evil will befall you in the latter days or the last days so let's see some of the things that moses said was going to happen to them in the so-called last days of them deuteronomy 32 and 24. Well, you got the hell right there. Let's start at 22. For a fire is kindled and kindled in my anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. You have Revelation 8, 7 and 8 right there. And I will heat mischiefs upon them. I will spend my arrows upon them. Revelation 6, 2. You see the dude with the with the um with the with the uh, bow, the arrows are right here being spit. Verse twenty four: They shall be burnt with hunger. That's the hunger, and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. That's the death. And I will send the teast of beasts. That's the beast we saw in Revelation upon them with the poison of serpents. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin and suckling also the man with gray hairs. I said I will scatter them into the corners. That's the scattering. And you see all of that in Matthew 24 and Revelation 6 where we just came from. All the way up into the beast with sword, with hunger, with death, and with the beast of the earth. All the way there. So we have right there. So then Matthew 24 and 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Revelation 6, 9. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, under the altar of the souls of them, there were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes was given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So now, what do we have here? We have, uh, hold on. Hold on, real fast. What do we have here? Uh, Matthew 24 and 10. And then sh shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And we have that also. We're just making correlations. Let's see what I got right here. Sorry. Like my video is messing up. That's messed up. Oh no. That's an old. But anyway. Let's see here. And many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Second Thessalonians 2 and 2. Second Thessalonians two and two. Uh, 
What is it? Two and two? It should be finished. Should betray one another. Should be hated for one another. That you be not soon shaken, nor be troubled, neither by us, nor nor the. Oh yeah, the day of the Christ is at hand, and that right there will be. I don't know why I got that correlation. I, I'm I'm thinking because um. All of these things had to happen uh, before the day of the Lord came. And he's letting them know that all of this stuff must happen before the day of the Lord come. So I should have more stuff there besides two and two. But I'll fix it later. Uh, second, that's uh, sorry. Uh, Matthew 24 and 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Acts 5.37 Now I'm going to have to cut it off. And I'm going to make the last correlation at the end and then we can go through it later. Acts 5.37 And after this man rose up Judah, well it started at 36. For before these days rose up Theodos, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who were slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed." And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them not alone. For if this counsel, if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. So in other words, we have the false prophets coming, deceiving many people. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And we can go there. And let me just give this real fast, just because you don't have any notes and you can read my writing. If you just can get past it and read my writing you see the notes I made you can read it yourself on your free time and go through it yourself and see if it's right or wrong but the last one is Matthew 24 and 29 Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give off her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So we got the uh, the sun being darkened, the moon shall not give off her light. All of the figurative language dealing with the apocalyptic stuff. And then we got the sign appearing and the Son of Man coming, right? So once you go to Revelation 6, the sixth seal, what happens at the sixth seal? Revelation 6 and 12. And I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell from unto the earth, even as a fig casts her, her, her untimely figs, and she is shaken of a mighty wind. Same thing we read in Matthew 24, but dealing with before the Son of Man come, this is seal 6. And heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and islands were moved out of their places. What did he say? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. We have the heaven departing right here as is a scroll and the mountains uh, moving out of their way. This is pretty much a Rome army coming in with their assault on Jerusalem. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us. And hide us from the face of him that sat on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. So now, what happened? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall the Son of Man come. So what are they seeing? They see the face of him that sat on the throne and the wrath of the Lamb 
for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand so they see the face of the most high and they understand that this is the wrath of christ and then shall the son of man come they see the great day the wrath is come that wrath is the wrath of christ that is christ's second coming once again christ's second coming was actual the wrath the the roman army that was christ's coming and i'm glad that matthew actually shows it so well the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come once again christ's second coming was through the roman army or the wrath which was through the roman army it wasn't him physically coming it was that wrath coming and i'm glad once again that revelation proves that so you don't have to go out there and see it so now that was it. Matthew 24 is all bottled up. And I want everybody to understand that all of this is in the sixth seal. And at the seventh seal, uh, you have the 144,000 being sealed, blah, blah, this and that. And at the seventh seal, where we at? Let me find the seventh seal real fast. Um, all of the rest of the destruction happened. See more you know, the mountain burning with fire. We saw that earlier. We saw that in uh in uh Deuteronomy. We have it right here again. A great mountain burning with fire. We got uh fire mingled with blood. We got the trumpet sounding. So we got all that stuff. So let's see if I can show you real fast where some of this stuff is coming from. And then I'm gonna end it. Let's see here. Give me one second and then I will end it. So what is causing all of this stuff? That is the question. What is going on here? Well, we have the answer. We have the answer. I was hoping. There we go. I'll see if we can get clear. Something like this. But bigger. The scorpions, the stuff, the tails with stingers and all that stuff. The horses and all that stuff. It looks like more like that. The sky coming into darkness and stuff. The clouds and all that stuff. Stuff being destroyed. So, uh. Let's see if I got more. We got that going on in uh, the Maccabees. That was going on in the Maccabees. But, uh. This is what they was fighting with back then. Stuff like this. This is the war that they bring in to uh, to, to uh, Jerusalem. See them coming as blood. Great stones coming on mountains. This is what he's describing. Stuff like this. The horses. That's it. You, you, you're reading in the Revelations he's describing crossbows and catapults and all that other stuff. That's exactly what he just did what he's describing just throwing those hailstones and bringing those that fire on the mountain and all that stuff. This is what it is. But alrighty, hopefully that gave you some edification.
And uh, sorry all three of my videos cut off, but it is what it is. Now it's late. I got to get to bed. Thank y'all for listening. Shalom. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. AOSD stands for Assembly of Sound Doctrine. AOSD Chandler. A-O-S-D-C-H-A-N-D-L-E-R. Love you all. Shalom.